So last time I showed you guys that this limit is equal to zero. Today, let's prove it, and you know it. Whenever we have to prove a limit, we better use the epsilon delta definition. And yes, this is the multivariable case, so we'll be doing the multivariable version of the epsilon delta definition. And this is the first one that I'm doing with you guys on YouTube. Let's have a look. Here, let me remind you guys the definition. Here, if we have a limit as x, y approaching, let's say, the point x0, y0, and let's say we have the function f of x, y, let's say this limit is equal to L. This means the following is similar to the single variable case. We start with for all epsilon greater than zero, then there exists a delta greater than zero such that this is the same as what we saw before and then the idea is still going to be the same such that whenever so we can say if the distance between this and that hmm be careful though here we have a point and a point the distance between two points we have to utilize the distance formula which is the square root and we can do this minus that squared and then we add this minus that squared. If the distance is less than delta, and in the meantime, we don't want x, y to be the same as x, not y, not. So let's make sure that the distance is greater than zero. If this is true, then the distance between this and that is less than epsilon. But this is a number, so we use absolute value. And we have f of x, y minus l, this right here, less than epsilon. All right? By the way, one thing to remember, if we just have, let's say, the limit as x approaching a, which is the single variable case, this part was written to be the absolute value of x minus a to be less than delta, yeah? absolute value of x minus a, we can write this as the square root of parentheses x minus a and then square. Yeah? So it's really the same as this right here. Yeah? And then this right here will come in handy how we rewrite the absolute value in terms of a square root and then a square. So now let's get back to here. First thing, you know it, write down pf. At the end, hopefully, we can legitimately put a box and then shade it in to show that we're done with the proof. But of course, I haven't done anything yet. I'm not allowed to do that yet. All right, let's look at the definition. Right here, we have for all. So I'll just say given, given epsilon greater than zero. Next, there exists. If the definition says there exists, we have to choose it. So we have to specifically say, choose delta to be something. But right here, we don't know what it is yet. Don't worry, just leave it blank and move on. This is the part a lot of people get stuck because if they don't know what to do, then they don't know how to continue. It's you just have to get over the idea. Leave it right now and then just continue. You can come back to this later. Huh? Such that if, so this is the assumption that we are going to make. And let's just say, suppose, we have that assumption. So we have x minus x naught. In this case, it's just x minus zero. And then y minus y naught. In that case right here, it's just y minus zero. So suppose zero is less than absolute value x squared plus y squared, less than delta. It's this right here. Suppose that. Now, this is what we want to see. So we will have to check that it will indeed happen we have to check this expression and then somehow it's less than epsilon. So we check the absolute value, absolute value, and here we have to do the function minus L. So here we have 3x squared y over x squared plus y squared minus our limit. And hopefully this right here is less than epsilon. Now we will just have to do some algebra. First, minus zero doesn't matter. Second, absolute value of a quotient is a quotient of the absolute value. For the bottom, x squared plus y squared is never negative because we're just using real numbers here. So we don't need the absolute value on the bottom. 
and then the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. And then the absolute value of x squared is just x squared because x squared is never negative. So we just need the absolute value around the y. Now, here's the tricky part. Have a look. We are going to work with inequalities. Do not use this yet. Try to simplify it. And we can do so boldly. You know, just be bold with it. Be brave. Uh, just use inequalities to simplify the expressions. Here, we have x squared and x squared. Wouldn't it be nice if we can somehow cancel them out? Of course, right? But we we'll have to do it carefully though. First, I'm going to get rid of the y squared. And of course, y squared is always going to be non-negative. So, if I do get rid of the y squared, then I will get the following expression, which is 3x squared absolute value of y over x squared. I just get rid of that. But, because this right here is non-negative, so when you're adding it to it, the denominator here, this is bigger than this denominator, and they have the same numerator. So the whole fraction here will be smaller than this one right here. Cool, huh? It's just that if you have 5 over, let's say, 5 plus 1 versus 5 over 5, which fraction is bigger? This fraction is bigger. Yeah, same idea. Now, we can legitimately cancel the x squared. So this is equal to 3 absolute value of y. Hmm, good. But we haven't used this condition yet. So something's wrong. How though? Well, here we have the absolute value, and this is what I told you guys earlier. We can write the absolute value in terms of a square root with the square inside. So that's the trick. And why do we do this? Because now, compare this and that, what are we missing? We are missing the x squared inside, right? So imagine if I just add the x squared inside here. Which expression is bigger? This expression is going to be bigger because x squared is going to be non-negative and the square root is an increasing function. So for sure, this right here will be bigger than or equal to that. So we can say this is less than or equal to this. And why do we do that? Because this guy is less than delta. Yo, this is less than 3 times delta. You know what's up already, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that this is just going to be an epsilon at the very end. So now the question is, here we have 3 already, so delta should be equal to what? Well, delta better be epsilon over 3, so that this and that cancel. Again, delta should be epsilon over 3, and this is the moment that we come by there, and then we put on epsilon over 3. Delta is the same as epsilon over 3, so it's an equal sign. And then as you can see, given epsilon greater than 0, we have this delta, which is epsilon over 3. Once we have the distance between this and that is between 0 and delta, then we will have the absolute value of this minus that being less than epsilon. So ladies and gentlemen, we are done.